Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and today you're joining us for another episode of our RP out here on Red Lawn Preserve. Now, currently we're chilling out on the, actually on, not really the deck, but I guess the upper balcony of our house right now. Just kind of looking over the town, you can see actually right down there below us is our F450. And of course, the K3500 shop truck is chilling out at the shop. Now, we actually got some info about somebody that needs our help. They're in a, at least from what I know, the details that I've seen, they're in a Range Rover and they drove into essentially a mud hole that they thought they could get through. They flooded their engine. The, the Range Rover now doesn't run, and so they need a couple of things. One, they need somebody to pull them out of the mud, and two, they need to be towed back to the shop to get the Range Rover fixed. And so what I think we're going to do is we're going to hop in the F450, we're going to drive to the shop, grab the K3500, because the K3500 will be fine as long as we don't need to go into any crazy rock crawling or anything like that, but the setup on it right now will be fine for what we're going to do. We just need to hook up the trailer to it, drive out there, and put the Range Rover on the trailer and get it back to town. I also heard that for whatever reason, the uh, the hinges for the hood are also broken, but we'll get a little bit more into that once we get there. So for now, let's drive to the shop. I absolutely love this truck. I'm thinking about changing it up a little bit, though, because the thing about it is that I've had it on this setup for, like, a while now. And while I really do like this setup a lot, I'm starting to want to change it up a little bit. And I think we also really do need to add a couple more things to the fleet. One of those needs to be a medium to heavy duty wrecker, like a medium to heavy duty tow truck. And then another one needs to be sort of a emergency rescue truck that is a little bit more off-road equipped than both this and the K3500. I'm thinking in the neighborhood of maybe uh, doing a Tundra because there is a really cool uh, rack system available, like a gear rack system um, that we can get for the Tundra that we can actually use to carry extra fuel, extra repair points, you know, uh, really any part that someone might need but let's bring this guy out here to the shop and we'll go ahead and just you know we won't leave it in high mode on the suspension and shut it down now let's hop in the k3500 head back to the house and grab our trailer i love the way this thing sounds it sounds so good all right let's back you up just making sure not to take out my own fence because i would really like to not have to buy a whole new fence for the shop already I mean, we did just move into this place. Like, literally just moved in. So, let's head back to the house now, and we'll grab that trailer. This thing is so fast. I mean, the tune on it is ridiculous. The tune on it is absolutely insane. It's making over a 1,000 horsepower. And sometimes, I almost feel like it's a little bit more than we need for a daily driver. But then again, I mean, like, half the fun of this truck is how unnecessary it is. I mean... Look, the house is right there, and I'm just going to do a boosted launch, because, like, just because. Three, two, one, go! Come on. Holy crap. I just realized that I just did a boosted launch in high gear with the handbrake still on. That's absolutely nuts. All right, why did I park the trailer like that? So now I have to back all the way around to the front and then turn the trailer around. Why, why would I do this? This is not what I originally had intended. I also would really like to, uh, at the very least, gravel or pave this side of the house. Because I really do like where this house is situated, because it's not exactly right in town, but it's close. Alright, let's hook the trailer up. And I'm going to go ahead and raise up the suspension as well. And I'm going to go ahead and ease this trailer back between those two trees. And we'll get her right back out onto the road. Now, I've got the GPS coordinates for where that stuck Range Rover is, or I should say, where that blown up Range Rover is. And we'll get down there, we'll pick it up, and then we'll get it back to the shop and see how much it's going to be to uh, to repair it. Now, I'm starting to kind of anticipate that it may be needing a whole new engine because from what I've heard, it's, I mean, it, it, it's in that mud pit pretty good. And it, not only is it in a mud pit, it's in a mud pit that was also flooded, and so there's, like, a lot of actual water in there. It's not just mud. And so what I think they did is they drove into it, didn't have a snorkel, stayed on the throttle, and just sucked a bunch of water up into the intake. And, you know, when you do that, you kind of set yourself up for needing a new engine, or at the very least, a massive rebuild. 
this hill is going to be so... It, it's so steep that even in this, with as much torque as this truck has, I'm really glad we're towing back down that hill and not up it. Because every time I've towed something up that hill, even in a truck that's got a ton of torque, a ton of, like, capability, you're still really working it. You really are. I love the fact that we've got off-road trailers that also tilt. They work so well, so incredibly well for situations like this. If you guys would like to check out this trailer for yourselves um, and multiple other tilt deck trailers, check out Pogrim's Trailer Pack, which is available on both PC and consoles. It's an absolute must-have if you do any kind of roleplay or even if you would like to have some really versatile trailers to add to a, a modded campaign playthrough. So I think we should be coming up on where that... Uh, Range Rover is. Let's see if we can see it yet. We should be seeing it momentarily. Now, right here, you can either go straight to head to the ATV park, you can go left to get onto some trails, or you can go right to get onto some other trails. And I think they may have misjudged the trail rating system. Oh, yeah, there they are. Oh, boy. Well, y'all got your, uh, holy crap. They definitely have their work cut out for them getting out of there for sure. All right, so let's get this trailer into position. So let's back you around. These trailers are really short, so turning radius-wise, you can absolutely just whip them right around on a dime. You just have to be really careful with that because you can also jackknife them really quick. Not bad. All right, let me get just a little bit better lined up. All right, that should work. That should work pretty easily. Now... We're going to tilt the trailer down, and we're going to shut the truck off, and then now we're going to go take a look at this, uh, we're going to go take a look at this Range Rover. So, what is, what is exactly going on here? So, uh, they've flooded it out up, almost all the way up past the taillights. The interior is soaked. There's water all... Oh, my God. There's water all over the interior. And... Oh, yeah. Uh, look where the intake is. Look where the intake is. This thing... This thing is blown up. This thing is absolutely 100% blown up. Well, I'm glad that we brought the trailer to get... Like, to actually winch it up onto the trailer. But here's the thing. We certainly do not have enough tools in our K3500 to get this thing even remotely close to running right here. Also, they were right. Apparently, these hin hood hinges are broken, and there's no getting them back down until we get it to the shop. So, here's what we're going to have to do. So, we're going to have to hop in here real quick, and let's see what kind of damage we're working with. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, that engine is blown, blown. I mean, it is, it is 110% blown up. All right, let's get you up onto the trailer. I am genuinely hoping that you have a centralized winch point. Because if you don't, ooh, this is going to be a time for you. Oh, dude. All right. You have a centralized winch point, thankfully. Come on. Let's get you. Oh, boy. All right, so maybe that's not the best way to do that. Let's see if we can get the trailer underneath the wheels. Oh, that's not good. Not good at all. Maybe a little bit. Can we get the wheels up over it? I really don't know. Nope. All right. New plan. Yep, time for a new plan. This went well. Oh, this went real well. All right, how about we get you... How about we get you out of there first? How about we get you out of the mud pit and onto some solid ground? Nice and easy. Okay, now that will probably work a whole heck of a lot better than what we were just doing. That may get the wheels up. Yes, that got the wheels up. Perfect. Dude, all right. I'm so happy we actually got it up onto the trailer. Now, now we got to make sure that we go ahead and pack it. Can we not pack it yet? But we probably can't. That should be fine now. Now we should be able to pack it. Yes. All right. Perfect. 
And now, since the parking brake on that is set, we'll tilt that trailer back down. We'll pack it up. And then now, as you can see, we are good to go. Well, as good to go as we can, uh, as good to go as we can be. Now, let's see. Wow, dude, this thing, I mean, you can see, like, when you actually get up close to it, you can see, like, how much water they actually had this thing, like, in. I mean, it is all, all over the vehicle itself. I mean, there is really not, not really an inch of the lower half of that Range Rover that's not covered, covered in mud. All right, ready to head back to the shop? Let's not roll backwards, Beans. All right, here we go. And now, honestly, I'm not really too concerned about getting this thing back to the shop. It's really not all that heavy in the grand scheme of things. And this thing, I've pulled way heavier with this truck before. So weight is definitely not a concern. And we'll see what they end up needing when we get it back to the shop. But I would venture a guess it's going to be a new engine. Ooh, easy. Especially with these engines. I don't even know if you would be able to rebuild one for less than the cost of just replacing one. Now, granted, I haven't really looked into Land Rover, Range Rover engines all that much, but I would assume that it would just probably be cheaper to pull an engine out of a wrecked Range Rover and throw it in this, like a wrecked low mileage Range Rover and throw it in this one, than it would be to, it, like, you know, to bring in all the parts to rebuild this engine. But then again, I don't really have many, like, you know, I don't have much experience with these, so we'll see. That hill is so much easier going down. Imagine that. All you need going down is decent brakes and you're good and a decently well-balanced trailer. But fortunately, we have both of those and we have no issue with that whatsoever. Imagine how this would look rolling through town. A Range Rover with broken hood latches and a blown engine on a trailer that uh, you just can't close the hood. And I still don't know how they broke those hood latches. I mean, I guess we'll, that's one of the other weird things we'll look into when we get it back in the shop, but I think it'll be fine. I think it'll be a-okay. Those shouldn't be difficult at all. All right, pulling up here. Should we go the long way around or the... I think we'll go the more direct way. Yeah, we'll make a left here. Go, go the more direct way in through town. Easy. I love how, like, all the torque behind this truck can just... Anytime you want a little bit of extra forward momentum, no matter how steep the hill really is, you can just ease right into it and it's gone even with weight on the trailer. Now, here's my question. Will we be able to get this trailer in there backwards? I probably, yeah, let's avoid doing that. Oh, it's gonna be a squeeze. It is gonna be a squeeze. Oh, my tire just bumped into that side. Let's try to avoid any scenarios like that. Really? All right, there we go. All right, we've got the Range Rover back to the shop. Now we gotta turn, okay, we've got plenty of room to do this. I'm gonna bring this thing around and I'm gonna let the Range Rover down off the trailer. All right, so let's unpack, take the ramp up, stop the engine, and now we can roll this thing off the trailer with just enough momentum. And then now we're gonna have to get, uh, we're gonna have to get a few people to help push it into the shop. Well, after doing some digging with this thing, it turns out not only did it need a new engine and new hood latches, it also needed, actually, it needed pretty much everything gone through, changed out, flushed out, and we've got it pretty much back to pristine condition. We had it detailed, and it's all ready to go. And now, we're going to go ahead and fire it up and roll it out of the shop. But if you guys enjoyed this episode of our RP on Red Lawn, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I will see you guys next time. Talk to you all later.